Hello everyone, welcome back to Bruce's investing series. Starting from October 25th, we have some we have some, we have some more other companies that are you know kicking off the quarter three's earnings season. Two weeks ago we have the banks, last week we have Tesla and other and other companies, and this week we have all the big techs announcing their earnings. On Monday we have Kimberly Clark, that's a company that sells tissues, wipes, and toilet paper. The PE ratio right now for this company is 22.66, the forward PE is 18.35. Kimberly Clark is a safety company and right now the economy it is, you know, there is still some high uncertainty out there. With that with that being being said about the economy, safety company stocks are gonna be very very much heavily valued. In fact their valuation is pretty much you know very stretched. That's that's the case for Kimberly Clark. Then Monday we have Facebook after after um, the market close. We know Apple they make a change for the iOS and the change in iOS basically allows you know the iPhone user to turn off ad, ad tracking. Ad tracking pretty much you know with that privacy setting in place that's going to hurt Facebook's business because Facebook made they make a majority of the money on advertising. We we know Facebook stock took a took a beating because you know Snapchat reported earnings and they stated that you know because Apple's privacy change that caused Snapchat revenue to be hurt and you know, a lot of people fear, you know, it's going to happen to Facebook. But I think this change in Apple is going to allow Facebook to charge more money for advertising. In fact, they can make more money from advertising now because because now, now with Facebook not able to track people's data, that's going to be giving Facebook a lot of, you know, bargaining power for for anyone that who wants to still use Facebook for, for advertising. Because, you know, if it's harder for Facebook to track data, it means that, you know, Facebook can charge more money for Simply, they have to do more work for the data tracking for for businesses that who wants to advertise on Facebook. So I think this Apple privacy, privacy switch is going to be benefiting Facebook in the long term. Facebook PE ratio is twenty four point eleven, and forward PE is twenty point seven five. That is very low for a lot of big techs comparing comparing you know all of them side by side. And next we have Logitech. Logitech that sounds like mouse keyboard. They sound more like office hardware equipment, but I like to read um, Logitech's earnings because I do own Corsair. Corsair sells, you know, gaming hardware, so it's kind of a similar business, but they're not really like a head-to-head -head competitor. But Logitech will give me kind of like a you know reference what Corsair's earnings will be like. Then we have you know American Campus Community. That's another company in the REIT space. That's a very interesting REIT. American Campus com Community, you know, last year in 2020 they took a big hit because colleges are closing down. People are remote learning. And for those who are not familiar with American campus communities, they own like student house and student apartments. They're like a third party for, for dorms, for campuses. We know that, you know, campus right now are fully returned. You know, colleges are reinstating the live on requirements for, for freshman years. And with, with all that, that being said, remote learning could be a potential risk, but that risk is very unlikely now because a lot of people are going back to school. The mandate for the shots are basically bringing back bringing back enrollments, but camp for, for American college right now, you know, it's kind of like a 50-50. Some college, you know, they took a enrollment dive because the mandate some colleges are not. So it's really a very, it's a very difficult stock to, to judge, you know, whether it's a good investment or a bad investment. But if you look at it from the valuation perspective, so for REITs, I tend to not use the PE ratio. The PE rate ratio for American campus community is 734, but that's very high. But for REITs, people like to use uh, the funds fund operation. They use a price over funds fund operation ratio. Funds fund operation is basically you take the net income plus depreciation. Remember, when you own a property, like a rental property, you can depreciate the value of the property for tax purposes. So you take that income plus depreciation minus the gains on, on selling up, on property selling. That's like the actual real earnings for for a REIT business. So people tend to use price over funds fund operation as a metric. So from that perspective, it is, you know, 24.64 is, it is not super high, it's not super low, it's kind of like in the middle. I mean, it's not, it's a stock that I'm still doing some research on, but I could potentially buy it because I think, you know, I don't think people will ever stop going to college. I think this is a very, you know, kind of like a safe investment, just like Kimberly Clark here. You know, with uncertainty in the economy, you know, safety stocks valuation is definitely going to get pushed very stretched. And that's it for Monday. 
Then Tuesday, you know, we have some other very interesting companies here. So, so Tuesday is more like a, um, if you don't know how the economy is doing, you know, read these companies' earnings. That will give you some general, you know, guidance on how the macroeconomics are for the U.S. So on Tuesday morning, we have UPS, GE, 3M, you know, waste management and Pulte Group. So if you don't know how the economy is doing, read UPS, you know, UPS will show you what kind of um, volume of deliveries that they're doing, you know, how much money they make from, you know, the logistics space. UPS, just like Kimberly Clark, it's a very, it's considered a safe stock. And since it's a safe stock, it's trading a very high, high premium right now. The PE ratio is 29, it's basically 29, 4 PE, 16.08. UPS, you know, like it's not a bad business. I prefer FedEx more because because FedEx don't have reliance on Amazon. UPS have a big reliance on Amazon for a majority of revenue. The reason why uh, UPS and Amazon have like a have like a partnership is because you know have you ever, have you ever bought something on Amazon you don't like and you return it? Well, when you return it, you use UPS service to return whatever you you want to return from Amazon. So you know UPS, you know it's not. It's not a bad stock. I prefer FedEx better. Then 3M, this is companies in the industrial space. They sell building supplies. They sell components for your car. They sell like post-it post -it notes you have in your office, on your desk. 3M is a favorite stock for dividend investors. In fact, this company, you know, they've been raising dividends, you know, for 63 years. You know, even in 2008, 2009, with the recession, they're still raising that dividend. And also in 2020, with the shutdown in the economy, they're still raising that dividend. Payout ratio is twenty. It's sixty point two two. It's you know it's not too high. It's not too low. It's pretty fair. P ratio is seventeen point eight, and the four P is seventeen point oh six. It's you know it's basically a very. It's like kind of like a uh, I won't say it's undervalued, but it's more like pretty much a like very attractive stock for a lot of different investors here. Then GE, you know, GE has been turning around a lot, but it's not a stock I'm really interested in because GE, I still think they have a lot of problem because they're, they're gotten way too big, too bureaucratic. Then we have Lockheed Martin, that's a defense contractor. Not an industry I like to invest in because it's way too cyclical because their revenue is, you know, very much dependent on the U.S. government. And, you know, some years U.S. government will be spending more money for the military, some years they won't. And I don't think the current administration in the U.S. government will actually be, you know, be in increasing the budget they're not really interested in doing that 4p is 13.11 and and uh, the p ratio they're trial in 12 months 14.68 it is pretty low but again just that if you're just looking at it from the p ratio perspective it is undervalued but look at fundamentals not a distance i'm interested in then we have waste management you know that's like the garbage collector uh, trucks you see every day just like uh, all the steady stocks before, PE ratio is 43.61. It is very far, far stretch. 4 PE is 28.99. The economy is still have a lot of uncertainty right now. I mean, the economy has gotten better since 2020, but there's still a lot of uncertainty. And with a lot of uncertainty, safety stocks valuation is very, very stretched. And waste management is a very safe business because, you know, people always need their garbage taken care of. Since it's a safety company, very high premium in PE ratio you're paying. Not a stock I'm really interested to buy at the moment. Then we have Hasbro. This is like a company that sells toys, you know, like board games for your ki for kids. PE ratio is 29.44. 4P is 17.3. Again, it's another safety stock. It's the valuation has stretched so far because the economy is still a lot of uncertainty. Then we have Pulte Group. You know, that's a home builder. That they're based in Georgia, Atlanta. They're based in Atlanta, Georgia. Their average selling price for a house is 447,000 bucks. P ratio is 8.04, 4 P is 5.61. You know, we know in 2020, there is a booming in the housing market due to lower interest rate and also people remote working. And with remote working, a lot of people moving away from the city to the suburbs. I think the housing market, you know, has captured so much growth ahead of time already. And with the interest hike potentially going up, you know, the next in the next year or the next two years, that may harm the business, you know, because people are not really likely to, you know, buy a home when the interest rates are very high. Then after market close, we have you know some very big name tech com companies now in earnings. We have Microsoft, Alphabet, AMD, Visa, and Twitter. You know Microsoft. You know it's a it's basically like the second most valuable tech company out there. It's also the second most valuable company behind Apple. They're famous for the cloud computing with Azure, the legacy business, the subscription business model with with Microsoft Office products. Alphabet. They own you know Google. They own YouTube very much depend on ad revenue with AMD, you know, that's a chip maker. Their competition is Intel and Nvidia. 
Then we have Visa. That's a one. That's one of the payment processing company. You know, have you ever buy something with a credit card or swipe a debit card? With Visa. Well, that's what Visa is. Visa is basically like a company that collects a, a fee for facilitating a transaction between the bank and the seller. Visa don't make any money on the interest payment on people who missed uh, the credit card payments. Then we have Twitter. You know, that's a social media company. You know, like we know Twitter stock and Facebook stock took a beating last week because Snapchat said that you know, Apple's iOS privacy switch is hurting their business you know twitter and facebook you know it, we don't know how how their earnings gonna be you know if if twitter and facebook you know are affected just like snapchat that could cause some volatility in the stock but i'm definitely interested in facebook more than twitter because i think twitter is a one-trick pony it's not really my favorite but i can't say twitter is a bad investment just because i don't like it but i do respect people's decision on buying twitter then we have Texas Instrument, you know, that's another chip maker like AMD. You know, right now we have a chip shortage. So AMD and Texas Instrument, if you want to know how, how companies, you know, planning on mitigating the chip shortage, read AMD and Texas Instruments earning. Robinhood, you know, that's like a very famous brokerage company. You know, they're famous for zero, zero um, commission fee trading. Not a company I'm interested in buying because I think that business, you know, right, is way too much commoditized because there's no distinction between Robinhood versus TD versus Vitality versus Shrop. So I'm out on Robinhood. Then on Wednesday, you know, morning with Bowen, you know, we know travel has come back pretty nicely. But for Bowen, they make they make the money on, you know, the defensive contract business and also airplanes for the airlines. You know, for Bowen, I think the business could be hurting for, you know, maybe for the rest of the year and possibly in early next year because I don't think a lot of airlines are still buying airplanes right now because traveling, it's, you know, it's starting to come back. I don't think business travel will ever, will ever recover like, you know, before 2020 because a lot of businesses, you know, they realize that, wow, with remote meeting and remote conferences, you know, that saves them so much money. They probably will not have likely to go back to, you know, business travel like it used to be. So Bowen, you know, is it's kind of an interesting business. It's a business that's deemed way too big to fail. So bankruptcy is very much unlikely. The government's definitely going to be, you know, it's going to be um, basically propping up their business if it, if it needs to. Then GM, this is a um, an automaker, a legacy automaker. GM, in my opinion, it's not a very good stock because number one, and it's also not a very good EV play in my opinion too because they repeat the same mistake they did in the past, like in the 90s and early 2000s, where they have way too much models, way too much cars that are very similar, and their sales are pretty much cannibalizing each other. Then we have Coke. That's a that's a safe. That's basically a safe company. You know, Coca Cola is a safety stock. Not much growth if you invest in this company, but I prefer Pepsi over Coca Cola because Coca Cola is just a drink maker, versus Pepsi is both drinks and snacks. Then we have Spotify. That's a company that's famous for you know. Your subscription plan for you know listening to music podcasts or you can sign up a free subscription but they will make you watch the ads so they make money on ads and subscription then after the market close on thursday we have four you know four i'm potentially interested in you know we know the f-150 is the best selling truck in the u.s they also the electric version i think that can also sell really well the ford mustang maki is a very nice car i think for you know they're actually putting a lot of effort for ev play for right now, they have you know they have a potential problem with chip shortage that could hurt their business in a way. But we'll have to see what kind of plans they have to mitigate that issue. Then we have Teladoc, you know Teladoc Health. It's a telemedicine company. They also bought a company called Vinco, I think, and this stock has crashed thirty percent plus from the fifty-two E high. I'm still doing some research on this one right now. I'm trying to look at the TAM for that business because Teladoc Health is not profitable at the moment. But I but profitability is not my concern for this company. Is my concern is what kind of total address the market telehealth can address and who the competition will be. Then we have a line that's company, you know, they're famous for the dental, for the dent dentistry care industry. They're famous for the, the uh, Invisalign, the retainer that you, you probably have if you do need those. And they also sell other dental equipment. But the main cash cow for that business is the Invisalign retainer. And this stock has also cracked a lot in the, in the past uh, 52 weeks this company is very high growth and, it, and it's pretty much like a safe business in a way a, a line because people always need care for, for the teeth and um, like, like I said before all any company right now that provides a safety product it's going to be basically push the valuation very high so a line technology you know I could potentially buy if I see a dip then we see up, up work 
over here on, on Thursday after hours. So Upwork, it's a freelancing economy type of business. So they charge, so how Upwork makes the money is they charge 20% commission and a 2.75% payment processing fee. Their main competition is Fiverr. So what distinct, what makes Fiverr and Upwork different is, so on an Upwork, if you as a freelancer, you bid for job postings, so employer will post a job, you would basically advertise yourself, you submit your resume, you send cover letters, and you basically bid a price you will charge them. Versus Fiverr, on the other hand, is on Fiverr, employers don't post any job. You create a profile of yourself and employers would look look up people on a database that they think is best matching them. So that's the difference between Fiverr and, and Upwork. Fiverr is more like Amazon where the, the seller can sell the products and service on, on it. So Fiverr is the product is you selling the service on the website versus Upwork is the employer posts a job and you can basically apply for it like you're applying for any other job. Then Thursday, we have Shopify before market opens. So Shopify, it's, it's a software company for uh, for anyone who wants to start a uh, e-commerce business. We have, we have Caterpillar. So Caterpillar, you know, just like um, Visa and MasterCard here. If you want to know how the economy is doing, read their earnings. Caterpillar is a company famous for the industrial space. They're famous for the um, machinery equipment, and they're famous for the yellow. Uh, their equipment's distinctive color is the yellow color. Caterpillar is a stock where I'm actually practicing my patient on at the moment because we know that we know Caterpillar gets a decent size of business out in China, and China has a right now recently have like a um, kind of like a kind of like a you know real estate bubble pop. You know we know Evergrande pretty much you know suffer a lot due to. A, Due to not able to pay back the debts they owe, so construction business could be potentially hurt in China. So, with that being said, Caterpillar stock could have some potential weakness. Weakness if you know if during their earnings they mention anything like that, that could scare investors away. That could cause the stock to drop. But I would definitely buy Caterpillar because I think Caterpillar is a great American company. In fact, their majority of the business I think is actually from the U.S. And China's like, I think it's like the second biggest source of revenue. So, I mean, Caterpillar could potentially be weakened for a period of time, but it's a very safe company. So, therefore, I will be buying Caterpillar if it drops. Then MasterCard. So, MasterCard, it's like uh, the second biggest payment processing company. So, MasterCard, but I, think, I think they have like more cards than transactions. And versus Visa is they have less cards than transactions. So, MasterCard, in my opinion, could have a more growth in the future because... Visa is seen as almost like a monopoly. Mastercard, not quite of a monopoly. So I think Mastercard have could have potential have more growth than Visa in the future. But either, but in my opinion, either Visa or Mastercard or both serves a good place in my portfolio. Then we have Merck. So Merck is a pharmaceutical company. Merck has a, a very rich um, pipeline of products for for the future. But recently, Merck uh, generated a lot of news because they have a pill that could that could potentially treat the uh, the illness that was, you know, very that was very, very much uh, devastating for the 2020 economy. For those not familiar with what that is, just look up why why was the economy shut down 2020. Then you will know what kind of illness, you know, what I'm talking about. Then we have MO. This is like a company in the tobacco space. Is um, a lot of people like um, Altria for the dividends, but personally, I'm not super interested in in uh, Altria because you know, because less people are actually smoking right now, and Altria is the making up by the making up the um the loss of potential customers by raising the prices and because you know altria is considered a consumer stable therefore consumer stables have a pricing power that's why people like altria as a dividend play but not a stock i'm really interesting right now and also smoking has, has a lot of um controversy and that could cause some volatility in the stocks you know i try to avoid you know volatility as much as i can you know if the volatility is you know it could potentially cost by harming the business then we have Overstock as a retailer, you know, for furniture, for the e-commerce company. Housing boom, housing boom pretty much drove a lot of their, their business activity. But if interest rate goes up, that could hurt um, the housing market. That could potentially hurt their business for Overstock. Then we have, you know, uh, AB in Bath. That they own like uh, Labatt's. We know how the economy is doing. Read their earnings. Then, then after the market, you know, we have Apple, Amazon, Starbucks. You know, those are the big tax. Then we have except for Starbucks, that's not a big tech. Then we have MicroStrategy Micro is a uh, enterprise business company. They own intelligence software. A lot of people buy MicroStrategy because they own a lot of Bitcoin. 
that's for a lot of people micro strategy is more like a bitcoin play then on friday it's more it's more like an oil day you know we have exxon and we have chevron then we have philip 66 and then we have one famous pharmaceutical company avi and a lot of people like avi for basically the dividends then royal caribbean not really interested in this one because a lot of people think dividends may not go back then we have colgate as a safe company you know safe company still a lot of uncertainty in the economy which means the valuation will be stretched out and uh, that's it for for next week please leave a comment below on what companies that interest you and uh and look forward next week where i'll be re i'll be definitely reacting to earnings on the big tax uh, have a good weekend everyone and uh looking forward to seeing you soon